Now the time is coming again for the panic talk action. Okay. A fever time and nega time. Uh, maybe fever time. On the right button. Okay. Tempo will be pushed to the max. It's not all. Uh, you won't miss during fever time. Pressing B on an apple. You can destroy your opponent's verbal assault. Uh, but only until your focus gauge runs out. Make sure. Okay. Get the upper hand. Nega time. Disappear, making it quite difficult. In that case, please time the rhythm not with your eyes, but with your ears and your passionate heart. Can't clear it. You can always change the difficulty setting. I'm not gonna tell. <laughs> not gonna tell them. They'll have to redo the class trial for that chapter if they do that. Oh my gosh! You'd have to start from the, the beginning of the entire class trial. Oof. Good luck and have fun. Hold on a sec, you bastard! You're saying she used her sword as a step stool and went out the fucking window? Then what about the sword? That's a good question. It would have been left in the shower room, and she wouldn't have been able to recover it, dumbass. Who you Hiko? Why do you even care? That's a good question. Why do you care? Shut up! Just shut the fuck up and answer me! If you have an answer, then fucking give it to me! If she used the bamboo sword as a step stool, it would have been left I mean, behind. could she not just reach down and grab it? I don't know how big the sword is, but like, I don't know. You could why? Why are you? Alright, I think I already kind of forget how to do this one, but I will figure it out. So I just have to time it, right? Uh-huh. Whoa! Boom, boom. Yeah, I hit the I hit the the fever time or whatever. Boom, 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 boom. I like this music. Yeah, I think I got this. Come on, get that 100. Oh, I I think I messed up. No, I didn't. Yeah, I did. I missed. All right, we're almost there. Bamboo sword bag. Oh, I messed up. I didn't do it fast enough. I think it's bamboo sword bag, right? Oh. Whoa. There we go. Bamboo sword bag. Yeah. Okay. I do like this more than the first game's like final thing, I think. If it's pretty cool. Sword as a step stone, she could have recovered it with her sword back. Oh, I see. Sword against the wall to use as a step stone. She tied her sword back to it. Okay. And then something like that. Oh, wow. And after she climbed up to the window, as long as she hauled the bag up toward her. Uh-huh. She would have been able to recover her bamboo sword. Okay. Whoa. I see. Not just the bamboo sword, but even the sword bag too. She used them both to escape. Okay, okay. Hakane said she's like a ninja, but it's nothing as silly as that. I mean, kind of is. Simply put, only Pekko could have performed this feat. An escape plan befitting of the ultimate swordswoman. This isn't taking into account the other person that saw the body. Even so, how disappointing. Only let me work with you. It would have been an even greater plan. But I'm pretty sure Fuyuhiko must have worked with her. I'm kind of convinced with about that at this point. No, you just back off. Yeah, again, I all he, he seems to be on the side of hope, but he's always saying about, oh, I can help the killer get away. And I, I keep, I forget why. I don't know. Hopefully that gets explained at some point. Uh huh. You don't have any proof. I won't accept this unless there's proof. There is proof. Got it, you bastard. It's fine. Huh? I said it's fine. Saying anything more would just be an exercise in futility. Okay. She admitted it just now, right? She admitted she's my hero's killer, right? But is this right? Even though Fuyuhiko was the one arguing with us, Pekko just admitted it so freely. Among men, the samurai. I commend 
your decisiveness. Okay. If you admit it, this ends now. Let's cast our vote. I need more answers about how this all ties together. Hurry up and vote. Hold on. Let me confirm. Hmm. Can it wait until after the voting? Probably not. This is important and it relates to the voting. It's about Peko's motive. That Pekka was girl E in the game, maybe? In the end, you had no connection to the events depicted in Twilight Syndrome murder case, right? Then, why did you kill Mahiru? Hmm. So it's about that. Let's see. If I must answer that question, I must say it was for the sake of justice. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh huh. Justice? Yeah. In order to protect the justice of this world. Yeah. Huh? I do not sully my hands to satisfy personal grudges. Okay. There is only one reason I kill. For the sake of protecting justice. What are you saying? Yo, Sonya must be having a trip right now. Justice is what makes humans human. It's a virtue that human beings should be proud of. Justice is the eternal sun. And the enduring moon, the protected father, and the smiling mother. Hello! Earth to Pekko! If justice ever disappeared from this world, uh -huh. the world would immediately freeze, and people's smiles would vanish. So is Girl E just, like, never going to be explained? I will not allow that. It's, it's fine, just stop it. Justice must always be there to guide us, to shine bright above our heads. I'm telling you to stop it! What is this connection? So I must fight. I must continue to fight to protect justice. This is... Could she be... Uh, yeah, I think she is, Sonya. As the light of justice shines upon my mask, I expose the hearts of malevolent evil. Whoa. Justice complete. <laughs> Seeing her wear the mask is just so bizarre. The center of justice that is pierced by justice. This is the so weird. Justice that shines in the night sky. I feel like this is so like out of left field in in a way. If Peko Peko Yama is not your real name. That would be me. Also, I huh. Let's execute justice. Aren't we executing you? <laughs> what? What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I am not Peko. I am sparkling justice or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Called that one. In the name of sparkling, shining justice. What are these symbols? All right, take a shot every time she says justice. What's going on? What's this? Chill. What's this music? Finally snapped! Everyone, please be careful. Sparkling Justice is a serial killer who claims to be an ally of justice. Uh huh. Clad in her various hero masks, she is a serial oh. killer who exclusively targets other criminals. Okay, so, um. This isn't always the mask that she wears. She has, like, different masks. And what makes Mahiru a criminal? Because I thought Girl E was the one that did the murder of Fuyuhiko's sister, right? So Fuyuhiko was working with Peko to kill Mahiru. How does that work? She is supposed to be... But... Huh? Ally of justice? So that's why you're wearing a mask. Yeah. This mask is the dividing line. Just like various items. The sun is revered because it lies just beyond your place. Okay. Justice should also be the same. What are all these symbols? Uh, I don't get it, but, but this is becoming really crazy. What? What the heck is this? Peko is the killer? Why is it turning out like this? This is turning out to be a surprising turn of events. It sure is, Monami. Hey. Monokuma, wake up. Take a look. 
It's a killer. <sighs> this again? What do you mean this again? Huh? Sleep talking? So what's your answer to my previous question? Why did you kill Mahiru? That's a, still a great question. This world must always be bathed in the light of justice. I must not allow even one shadow. Evil must be eliminated immediately. But what makes her evil? No matter what, I must not overlook evil. <laughs> evil? Are you saying Mahiru is- Yeah, how is Mahiru evil? You knew about that incident. You must have played the game. Am I right? What, because she helped cover up? the first murder or whatever and because of that i was able to find the killer's accomplice hiding on this island like a sewer rat oh so the killer is just so like huh so i wonder all right all right all right all right all right all right so uh girl e kills fuyuhiko's little sister whoever's named sato i guess fuyuhiko kills sato but then, by playing the game, found out that girl D helped in the the killing of his little sister. Um, so Sato is already dead, but finding out that Mahiru helped cover it up means that Mahiru has to die in the name of revenge and justice and all that stuff. Um, I don't know how Fuyuhiko found out that like Peko would be could be someone to work with, but I think that all adds up. And you killed Mahiru was because she helped cover up the the murder of. To protect justice, of course. I mean, that's just going to be your answer to everything, isn't it? In order to protect justice, I have become its merciless sword. How much? Huh? How, how do like the memories of you remembering being the justice, sparkling justice, or how Fuyuhiko would have known about that? And executed justice. Holy crap! She's such a <laughs> psychopath! Ugh. Like, everything is almost all there. I just don't, under don't understand the connection as to how Fuyuhiko and Pekka would have been able to connect in any sort of way to make this happen. I... I mean, I bet... I guess both would be your true identity, wouldn't it? forgotten who I am. It just shows my determination. My determination to protect by throwing away what's most important. What, your life? I'm willing to become anybody to shower this world with justice. <laughs> I wonder what made her this way. I wonder if there's more answers in her, like, free time events that I don't think I ever got to hang out with her. Oh, I can't stand this anymore. Let's just end this farce already. End it? He's right. This we need to end this already. The killer in the end. There's no mistake that it was Peko all along. Let's go over this incident one more time and then let's end this. Okay. Let's do this. All right. Now, how did this all happen? Okay. Uh. All right. So let's. We got Mikan arrives at the beach house. Uh, Tears Soak sprint from the beach house. Hiyoko arrives at the beach house. Mahiru arrives at the beach house. The killer dropped a lemon flavored gummy. Mahiru met. No, let's see. Order Lord Mahiru and Kyoko. The killer left a letter. The first one to al arrive at the beach house was. Uh, Hyoko. Yes. Cool. Then Hyoko. Or uh, the killer drugged her, put her in the closet. Then Mahiru arrives at the Beast House, right? Yep. Perfect. Then is killed. Drags... Is drug in there. Uh, what did the killer leave next to the body? No, we don't have that yet. Washing the blood off. Right. To wash off the blood. That's the surfboard case. And then... Uh, the first one who found the body was... Yoko left a big piece of evidence. Okay, so this? No. Maybe that's a fake, because that's just the same picture as that. So, maybe this goes here? No, is that the next one? 
Oh, all right, all right. Uh, after Hyoko ran away, here we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, so those two were faked. Uh, pretty anime girl mask. That was over here. Wait, no. Yes. Uh, where should I hide? Time to wash off the blood. Next to the body would have been this, this. Yes, okay. Um, the killer forged two letters. That's probably the very first one, right? Let's go back to the beginning. Uh, Mahiru met. Uh, the morning of the incident. No. Yes, here we go. Alright, what do we have? The killer takes the bamboo sword out of the sword bag. Okay, that's escaping. And then Hyoko wakes up. I don't know if Hyoko wakes up as part of this here. Because that would be... Where's that hide? No. Who found the body? Uh, maybe here? I'm gonna try this. Okay. Alright, ooh, we have plastic water bottle. Here we go. Where should I hide? Mm, here. To wash off the blood. Time to wash off the blood. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, after Hyoko left, she left these footprints. Yes. Cool, cool. Holds the metal bat. Bamboo sword in the sword bag. Hyoko's still sleeping. Hmm. What do we have here? The lemon candy. What's this? To retrieve the bamboo sword, I must do this. Uh, tie the bamboo sword to the sword bag? Yeah. Last stock. Let's go. All right, so let's go from the beginning and then see which ones we're missing and fill it in from there since this is the last stock. Um, okay, so right at the beginning. Let's see. Mahiru uh, is talking to someone. Wait, right? On the morning that Mahiru met... Seems Hiyoko made a promise with somebody, so probably this one? Yeah. Okay, then we're up to... Here, let's see. Right here. After you wash off the, the body, where should I hide? That's the surfboard case. Yep. Oh, that's it! Nice! Alright, I thought there'd be one more. Okay. Mahiru most likely played Twilight Syndrome murder case. The video game provided to us as the mode. Okay. She probably wanted to discuss it with someone else who also appeared in the game as a character. Right. Hyoko accepted Mahiru's invitation, and they promised to have a more detailed conversation about it later. Okay. However, someone else overheard their exchange. The killer. Interesting. The killer eavesdropped on their conversation and used their promise to devise a specific murder. That's really lucky that they just happened to overhear this specific conversation. By preparing a specific item, they plan to manipulate the two's actions. Okay. So they forged the letters. That item was the letters. They sent fake letters to both Mahiru and Hyoko. The letter Mahiru received told her to come to the beach house at 2.30 p.m. Yep. And the letter Hyoko received told her to come to the beach house at exactly 2 p.m. Man, lucky that uh, Hyoko just didn't decide to be late or anything like that. Providing different times. The killer was able to lure them to the beach house separately. Or that Mahiru was like early, or a mix of both. Hyoko totally trusted that letter. Showed up at the beach house at 2 p.m., just like it said. And was drugged into unconsciousness by the killer lying in wait. Yup. After putting Hyoko to sleep, the killer immediately hid her inside the closet. Yeah. They could frame her as the killer later. All makes sense. 2.30 p.m., Mahiru arrived at the beach house. She was completely unaware that she'd been targeted for murder. Uh-huh. Approaching her from behind, the killer struck the defenseless Mahiru with a specific weapon. Yep, the metal bat. The metal bat that was left at the scene of the crime. The bat was brought down onto the back of Mahiru's head, and with that, she took her last breath. So wait, so maybe Girl E in the game, since she was also killed by the Metal Bat, maybe it was a similar thing. Fuyuhiko didn't actually do the killing, but got uh, Peko to do it for him? Or something? According to Mikan's autopsy, Mahiru died instantly. 
so she probably never knew who killed her. Yeah. With that, the killer achieved their goal of killing my hero and began to tamper with the crime scene. Okay. Yep, drag the body. My hero's body so that it blocked the door leading to the road. Yeah. Also, that's a creepy smile behind that mask. Something the killer personally left. I'm not really sure why. My guess is it's something similar to a calling. Yeah, that's about the only reason you would. Uh, I don't think Pekko... It's so weird. Pekko, like, go, did go through things to make sure that she wouldn't get caught, but then also left, like, this big calling card as to, like, oh, hey. Um, uh, Justice... Oh, my gosh. Sparkling Justice uh, was, like, the one who did this. That's how the crime scene we discovered was created. However, by moving Mahiru's body, the killer got blood splatter on him. Plus, the shower room had no water because it was out of order. Yep. So they couldn't wash it off. But the killer expected something like that to happen. Yeah. Instead of the shower, the killer used something else to wash the blood off their body. They used plastic water bottles that were inside the beach house refrigerator. We can assume they carried the bottles to the shower room before the sequence of events had happened. You know, now that I think about it, at the beginning of the trial, I said that this was probably a very simple murder of, like, oh, it just showed up, hit, like, ran away. Th there was a few more steps. <laughs> there was a few more steps than I anticipated, I think. <laughs> In place of shower, they washed the blood off their body with water bottles instead. However, they had no choice but to dispose of the empty bottles in the beach house's trash can. Yep. is against the rules, and it would have taken too much time to throw them away somewhere else. True. After the killer washed off the blood, they hid in a specific spot inside the closet Kyoko was in. The killer hid inside the surfboard case that they had already emptied beforehand. Uh-huh. After some time had passed, the sleeping drug used on Hyoko wore off, and she woke up. I can imagine how badly Hyoko must have panicked when she came out of the closet. Uh-huh. She made plans to see Mahi. Who lay dead right in front of her. And the shock and panic of being considered a murder suspect. Yeah. That actually kind of makes sense. Fled from the beach house. Right. And then what? Because of that, she left footprints in the sand. Everything was a trap set by the killer to frame her. After Hyoko left, the killer finally came out of the surfboard case. And placed a gun that they brought with them to ship our suspicion. Where did they get that gummy? Probably just from the supermarket, and it was just a different brand. Ironically, placing that gummy is what helped clear our suspicion toward Hyoko. Yeah. Uh, should have been smarter than that. Finally, the killer began preparing to escape from the beach house. They couldn't risk leaving their footprints in the sand. So they escaped the beach house using a different route. The small window in the shower room. Uh-huh. However, that window is rather high up and can't be reached easily. Which is why the killer used... I mean, it looks like something that wouldn't even be able to be opened. So I wonder when uh, Pekko did this, like, scouting ahead of time to make sure that it could even open. I mean, there's plenty of time to have done so, but... Always carry with them. The killer took the bamboo sword out of its bag, tied the bag to the sword's handle, and used the sword as a step stool to reach the small window while holding the sword bag in their hand. That is still really impressive. As long as I would not be able to do that. All they had to do was pull the bag to retrieve the sword. And so the killer left the beach house and appeared before us as if nothing had happened. I love that they still use, like, just the, the regular gray outline and be like, oh no, it could still be anybody. <laughs> but their wet hair and swimsuit didn't dry right away. There also weren't any towels at the beach house. So when the killer met up with us, they said they had been swimming for a while as an excuse. Uh-huh. So how about it? This is the truth behind the incident you caused. Isn't that right, Peko Peko Yama? Oh no! I see. And what of it? What do you mean, and what of it? You can't just do that. She's like, totally cool with it. I haven't done anything to be ashamed of. Yeah, that's what I figured you'd say. What are all of these faces? No reason to condemn me. Whatever. Let's hurry up and 
so we can freaking kill this weird, crazy bitch. I still want to know the connection between her and Fuyuhiko. There's no way you can kill me. But we are going to. Justice can never be killed. You should all know that as well. What are you saying? To protect what's most important to you, you must be prepared to throw away something equally important. Understand? No, not really. Yeah, I'm with Mikan. Then I shall be direct. Justice must carry on. So what are you passing the torch to somebody else or what? In order to keep justice, to keep me alive, you all must give up your lives. <laughs> oh. I mean, if we do that, then she does get to graduate and then justice can live on. I don't think that's going to happen though. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, nobody else can do that. Definitely not at all. Now, follow your hearts of justice that reside within you all and save my life to protect justice. Why is the room spinning? Hurry and carry on justice. Give me a break. Who's going to die for you? Sonia might. No. I'm not down for this. Yeah, I can't imagine that, like, the majority of people are going to be swayed by this. Yeah, I was like, you might be able to convince Sonya, which means that you might be able to convince Kazuichi. But, like, who else is going to volunteer for that? Good. Finally, woke up. Finally. I heard your story. Well, I wasn't listening, but who cares? <laughs> pull the lever in front of you and cast your vote. Who will be chosen as the blackened? I the hope we make the right choice. Or the dreadfully wrong one. There better not be too many people that pick somebody else. Come on. Okay. Alright. So she did still receive uh, all the votes necessary to execute her. Pardon me. Can we please have a little more time? N no. Um, pardon me. Can we have a little bit more time? Please let us continue our discussion. N no, we cannot. Continue our discussion? But isn't the voting over? Sonia, no. Yes, but I cannot help but feel strange. Something about this is definitely strange. What about it? Strange? What do you mean? There's no doubt that Peko is the killer. That is true. However... Yeah? As a serial killer enthusiast, you're wondering if Peko is really sparkling justice. Am I right? Oh, or just like a copycat? Hey, Miss Sonia isn't a serial killer enthusiast. I. I mean, that's kind of what an enthusiast means. That makes her an enthusiast. Yeah, thanks, Abuki. Honestly, it felt strange to me too. I mean, there's a distinct difference between what we know about sparkling justice and pet. That is true. Sonia described sparkling justice like this. Oh, how did she describe sparkling justice? Justice complete. Uh huh. The center of justice that is pierced by justice. The lead star of justice that shines in the night sky. Wait, so Peko didn't like say the catchphrase properly? That would be me. Sparkling justice. <laughs> what the heck was that? That is sparkling justice's catchphrase. An unknown serial killer has a catchphrase? Oh, was she trying to, like, copy that? I read it in a magazine in the library. And there's only ever been one person, a journalist, who has interviewed Sparkling Justice. The article was written in their native language, so I tried translating it. Huh. So that's what it was. I think I've got the difference between the serial killer and Peko. 
Uh, nationality, because it said local language or whatever, right? I see. That's right. According to what Sonia said. The article was written in her native language. So yeah. To translate it. If she had to translate it, that means it wasn't written in English, right? Yeah, or probably Japanese, because I assume these are, you know, these are all Japanese characters. But yeah, we're playing it in English. Yes, the magazine I read was written in Spanish. Oh! So, Sparkling Justice's catchphrase was no doubt written in Spanish as well. Which means the journalist and Sparkling Justice are both... Spanish. Okay. Yo, this game loves its symbols, like, so much. All this time, I completely misunderstood. When I first heard about the serial killers, Genocide Jack and Sparkling Justice, I just assumed both serial killers were from the same country. But that wasn't the case. If so... Heko, you're not Sparkling Justice. There's no way that's possible. She just tried to... She just, wait, she knew she was caught and just tried to use that as, like, a way to get out of the vote? <laughs> oh, I really want her to give it an attempt, please. Come on, try it. It appears that the time has come for this mask to come off. Y yeah, sure. I mean, it was off before, wasn't it? However, that's perfectly fine. It's no longer necessary. And even mm -hmm. if you find out now, it's too late for you all to do anything about it. What are you insinuating? Oh my gosh, it's Pecco! My duty? Has already been finished. Okay. My duty as a tool has already been completed in full. Ye okay, sure. As a tool. Uh huh. Looks like she's back to normal. Yeah, if you consider that normal, I guess. That mask has fulfilled its purpose, just as I. Have. What do you mean? Fulfilled its purpose too late? What are you getting at? Yeah, I don't really understand what she's trying to get at here. Now that you've already cast your votes, is what it means. Huh? Hey, be clearer. We're asking you what your purpose was. I have no purpose. I am just a mute tool. Okay, so does her... Does her... Specifically, or her family have some sort of connection to the Kuzuryu clan then? Uh huh. I wonder who that could be. Of course, a tool cannot do anything on its own. I see. Finally understand. Well, I did have a sneaking suspicion all along. Was a sneaking suspicion when Fuyuhiko was like, "There's no way she's a killer" after all the evidence pointed to her, or what was it? What do you mean? I mean, besides Pekko and Hiyoko, Oh yeah, and also that. Else was also at the beach house. All right, now tell me how he got out of there. Yeah. Proof there's more than one person seeing the crime. The body discovery announcement. I've been waiting for this to be cleared up for a long time. Yep, we still have a person unaccounted for. So what about this time? Is there is it three people including the killer or not? Geez, fine, fine. You want me to say it? It doesn't include the killer this time. Okay, all done. Is made when at least three people discover a body. Yep. And in this particular case, the killer, Pecco, is not one of those three. Exactly. If that's the case, it would mean only Hyoko and Kazuichi discovered the body, but. We're still missing somebody. That leaves us one person short. So that means there was one more person in the beach house. Yep. Plus, the fact that Monokuma tried to hide that truth from us by being flexible with his own rules. That's such a vital clue that it could alter the outcome of the trial. Like an accomplice, for example. Yeah. No, that's not it. What do you mean that's not it? Huh? Am I wrong? Yes. From your basic way of thinking about it, you are wrong. Didn't I tell you? I'm just a tool. That means I'm just a simple tool to be used by that person. Right. Therefore, that person would have the strongest motive out of anybody else here, right? Yes. 